So keratoconus is a disease of the cornea. Your cornea is the clear window right in the front of your eye that you look through. And with keratoconus, we think that there is a weakness of the structural cornea. And so over time, it can protrude, protrude out like a cone, and it can get thinner and more and more distorted. Because the cornea does most of the focusing for your vision, if your cornea is distorted, then your focusing is poor and your vision is blurry. Uh, this disease tends to affect patients in their teens and 20s, and sometimes it shows up in patients in their 30s. So cross, collagen cross-linking for a keratoconus is an in-office procedure that we do to stabilize and strengthen the weakened cornea that is progressively getting worse in keratoconus. It was approved by the FDA in 2016, but it had actually been used worldwide for more than 10 years before that. So corneal cross-linking is an in-office procedure. The patient is there for about 90 minutes or a little bit more. Um, initially, we have to gently scrape away the superficial layer of the cornea, but we do this under topical anesthesia, so there's actually no pain at all throughout the time that we're doing this procedure. Um, after that, we put sticky riboflavin drops in every two minutes for about half an hour, and then the patient has to lie real still and look, stare at a, an ultraviolet light for about 30 minutes. Afterwards, we put a, a contact lens on that we use like a Band-Aid to reduce any pain or discomfort and to help with healing. And the patient will use uh, antibiotic and steroid drops for about three or four weeks afterwards. So keratoconus is a progressive condition. Patients with mild keratoconus can wear glasses, but as the condition worsens, they may become more and more dependent on glasses, and then they may have an option to wear contacts. And as that worse, as the keratoconus worsens, they become more reliant on contacts. Then they become dependent on contacts. Then they become dependent and have trouble with contacts. And ultimately, they might even need cornea transplants. Um, each stage where it progresses affects quality of life for the rest of the patient's life. And so the earlier we can stop things where they are, it's, it's better for patients. So for patients considering cross-linking, it's important to have to think long-term. This really is a life-changing procedure, but unfortunately there's not much bang for the buck when you go through this procedure because we're really just trying to keep things stable. We're trying to keep things where they are. My analogy for this is for those patients who take cholesterol medications or blood pressure medications, and they're expensive, and they take them year after year after year. Um, but if, if taking those medications was going to prevent a massive heart attack or stroke 20 years down the line, then it's worth taking those medications, even though you don't feel any better or, or it doesn't really do much for you at the time. Uh, same thing with cross-linking. You have to realize that if the keratoconus gets worse, you have to live with it for the rest of your life. So it's really a life-changing procedure to at least stabilize it before it gets any worse.